Hey, what's up, YouTube? This is Coldwater from Phantom Trading, and in today's video, we are going to be discussing the do's and don'ts of premium and discount. So, we're basically going to be covering how to use premium and discount on the different time frames, and I'm going to try to show you guys uh, the reason why most of you are probably using this tool wrong. It's an okay tool. I think it's great for ranges. Obviously, there is uh, some merit as to why it works from a theoretical standpoint, but in certain situations when you know price is very volatile or there's a lot of momentum in one direction or another the price isn't always going to come and retest or you know retrace back into say premium in a bearish market or discount in a bullish market right so i want to cover all of that we'll go through a few examples looking at euro dollar i've just pulled price back to the start of 2022 roughly um but yeah let's go through it so before we actually dive into the charts here, I wanted to show you guys an example of premium and discount that you're probably a little bit more familiar with. If you ever pumped your car with gas, then of course you're familiar with fluctuating gas prices, especially, especially lately. I mean, obviously the world has seen a huge jump in gasoline prices. I mean, I think they're tapering off now from what I've noticed, but this is a great example of premium and discount, right? I'm sure, you know, a lot of you avoided uh, buying gas when it was super expensive and obviously now that it seems like it's in relative discount to the you know the huge jump in prices we saw uh, in the summer you're more likely to want to buy more gas right and fill your tank up so i think this is a great example of premium discount in the real world right in this graph what i've created or that i've created uh, essentially it represents our price per gallon on the y-axis and our demand and sales right of you know gallons of fuel for just a, a gas station on the x-axis at the bottom there so this is really you know just one example of premium discount of course you can use this for pretty much anything you could use it for a stock or equity you could use it for milk you could use it for the price of rice in china if you really wanted to right i mean premium discount is uh something that you're going to encounter in any free market so what's the first thing that immediately jumps out at you when you first look at this graph. Well, it's probably the inverse relationship between the price of gas and the amount of sales that this gas station is doing, right? Remember, we have demand here in the form of sales and price per gallon is essentially the supply or what the gas station is willing to offer for, you know, the fuel that they're selling, right? And of course, that's going to be based off of, you know, some other things like what the actual uh, gas station paid for that fuel wholesale and, you know, how much profit margin they want to make off of the uh, the gas that they bought that they're now selling to you, the consumer. So now I want you guys to picture that this gas station puts its fuel on sale for a dollar a gallon. What do you think is going to happen uh, to our sales, our actual gallons of fuel sold? Well, of course, it's going to explode because fuel is at a huge discount. And of course, everybody's going to rush to the gas station in order to capitalize on that deal or that huge discount in pricing for the fuel in the market right? it makes sense there's going to be a huge jump in demand on the flip side if say the gas station decides okay we're going to put our prices up to seven dollars a gallon do you think we're going to sell as much fuel oh probably not right in this case right our price would actually now be in premium and that's not such a good deal i'm probably going to go around and just fill up you know 20 to 30 dollars worth of gas i don't need to fill my tank up all the way i'm just going to do what's necessary right and that's essentially what premium and discount pricing is right so we can apply that same thing again to any stock or equity or in this case you know if you're trading forex uh to a currency pair right if price is relatively low right then we're in discount if it's relatively high then we're in premium and of course, we want to sell when we're in premium and buy when we're in discount because that gives us the most opportunity to capitalize on, you know, the actual movement in price because we're expecting it to go up in discount and we're expecting price to move down when it is in premium. Makes sense? All right, so the last thing we're going to look at here is the idea of equilibrium. And you're going to see this on the chart as well when we start looking at actual candlestick charts. But... Again, in the case of the gas station, this is usually going to be, you know, the most fair price for, for fuel that both the consumer is willing to pay on the demand side and what the gas station is, 
you know, willing to sell it for on the supply side, right? Of course, the gas station wants to maximize profits and sell uh, fuel for, you know, the most amount of money that they can get for it per gallon. And on the demand side, you know, they want to pay as little as possible uh, for fuel. So they want a cheap price, right? But of course, we have to meet somewhere in the middle where, you know, essentially the gas station is able to produce a healthy amount of uh, revenue as well as sales, right? If it's too low, they're not going to make money. If it's too high, um, they're still not going to make money either, right? We kind of think of it as like a parabolic equation, right? If you guys ever took, you know, basic math class, it looks a little bit something like this, right? Where depending on where we set the price, right? Our sales are kind of going to be like this and it's going to peak out at some point, right? We set it too high. We're going to see no sales. We set it too low. We're not going to be making money on the, the huge amount of sales that we are making, right? So that happy middle ground is what equilibrium is, right? And so when we see a range on a chart, that's essentially what equilibrium is going to be as well. All right, guys. So what we're going to do next here is use the premium discount tool, just looking at the daily. And again, you can use this tool pretty much on any time frame. but I'm going to show you guys kind of, again, the common pitfalls that people fall into when they're using this tool. And I'm going to show you how you can use it in a more predictable way. Now, honestly, I don't use the tool in the sense that I actually mark out premium discount, but of course I do pay attention to, you know, each structure leg to get a sense of whether we are in premium or discount just kind of subconsciously. And I think that's something that uh, you'll kind of develop over time as you, you know, learn to trade. Obviously you want to sell in premium and buy in discount, right? So the first example I want to show you guys here is just this range. This is one way that you can look to use premium discount obviously using it in rangy markets like this where we've established you know pretty uh, clear high and low and the whole idea is to actually avoid really just trading in the center of a range because usually within the center of a range you know price is essentially generating liquidity that it's later going to sweep right as you can see here i mean you can take some intraday longs and stuff i'm not saying that you should completely stay out of it but obviously the higher probability trades that you're you're going to be uh, able to take are going to be from the highs and the lows here within this actual range. And obviously, if we were to take, you know, say longs from these levels, they're not levels that you necessarily want to hold from because, again, price is going to sweep them out and then, you know, eventually move in the direction that it's intending to go. So let's play through this a little bit, right? And let's keep on marking out premium discount. I'm just going to kind of mark it out the way that I would you know, do it in my head in a way. Um, the reason I don't like marking it out on, you know, the live charts is just because it gets very messy. Of course, it can be a little bit subjective as well, but you essentially want to just mark out clear ranges and legs of price action, right? So either you're looking to mark out a clear range, right? And you mark it out as the top and bottom, or you've produced like a really clear leg. Maybe you're ranging before and now you're starting to range or pull back again and you want to mark it from the bottom to the top. Right. And that's your premium discount. And this is your premium discount for the range. So let's keep pushing forward here again. Sometimes the, the range is going to sort of expand, right? If we don't get a, a clear pullback, it's almost like we're trying to mark out structure here, right? We don't want to just try to short right away because we are in premium, right? We want to see price start to actually, you know, change character and start breaking internal structure on the, the respective time frame that we're on. So again, this is going to keep expanding up. We're going to keep on pushing up higher, right? And now you can see that price is starting to pull back a bit, but we haven't really gotten internal structure break. So again, I wouldn't count that either. So I'm just going to keep expanding it until we get something really clear. Because again, we don't want to try and, you know, catch a falling knife in the sense that we don't want to try and call the top or bottom of a uh, particular range. We're not trying to call a reversal here, right? Okay, this is a little bit better. We can see that we're now starting to break substructure, right? So... I'll just mark this out as a, well, we'll call it a 15 minute boss just cause I'm kind of zoomed in here. So you guys can see a little bit better and use a different template. I just have my screen zoomed in. So it's a little easier for you guys to see the candles and stuff. So this is an area where we would now expect price to start potentially retracing back into discount. And the reason for that is because look, we've broken internal structure to the downside, right? So I'm, I'm folding in the concept of using structure. Plus we're well in premium. 
uh, within this structure ranges lay, right? So we can essentially expect bearish price action now. And what happens? Price pulls back, right? Does that mean it's going to come back to discount? Not necessarily. Right? It may not come down all the way to the extreme, but there's the possibility that it might. Right? And so you can see that we've gone below the 50% mark. Obviously, you can customize this tool as well so that you have, you know, 25% and oops, and 75% or, you know, 70 and 30 if you want to do it that way. Right? Kind of have it like that. But again, the reason I don't do that is just because it gets a little bit messy. Right? But you can see that here would be our 75% uh, point or mark. This would be our 25% mark. I'm just going to delete those, turn them off, and we'll keep it to 50%. But you guys kind of get the idea. So let's see. We're going to continue to probably push down. And we may see price shoot up from here now because we have tapped equilibrium. Or we're going to see it continue to push lower. And obviously within that, right, the other way that you can view this as well, you know, this is more applicable to the lower time frames uh, relative to, to the higher time frames. Right? So I'm talking about the four hour and 15 minute. Within the larger overall leg, we have our internal structure, right? And we have premium discount for each of these legs as well, right? So we have this one and we have this one. And look, same with this price shot down, right? And we broke multiple levels of internal structure and it retraced to equilibrium and then it continued to push down. That makes sense. So I'm just gonna move this over a little bit. And let's see if price is going to continue to retrace and push deeper into the larger overall move, right based on our internal structure, or if we're going to continue to push higher. Okay, so we kind of tapped into premium here, but it's looking like it's going to continue to push up, right. So it, essentially, what's happened here is our larger overall leg developed itself, Price has come back, hit equilibrium actually touched into discount of this range below 50%. And now it looks like it's going to want to push up higher and that this is essentially going to be a weak high. So again, just I'm just pairing it with our whole concept of, you know, uh, expectational structure and order flow. What happens? OK, we end up sweeping. And now we're continuing to push down. So we're going to come back deeper into to discount. Now, remember, we're still within this larger overall range leg. Right. So in this case, that'll happen sometimes, you know, it worked in this case, right, where price came back, retested, pushed down, then of course, it's going to take some liquidity that was sitting here. Um, it just makes sense that it would do that. There's a lot of stop losses probably sitting up here. So institutions, banks are going to want to take the liquidity that's sitting there. And now we're essentially forming this new sort of substructure, uh, premium discount structural or like internal structure like, so again, same thing, let's see. Now we've tapped deeper into discount. Does that mean that we're going to push up from here? Maybe I would say uh, potentially, yeah, we could see that happen or we're going to see, you know, our internal uh, structure and range start to follow through and maybe we'll see price, you know, drop all the way from here. Right. But the other thing that we can kind of you know pay attention to as well is if we look at like the larger overall picture, here, right, we have a demand level that's in discount that price is essentially reacting to. Now, again, whether this is going to be used as a complex pullback, uh, just to sort of have price to react to it before it fails. Uh, we, again, we don't know, right? So let's see if price then comes back into, you know, one of these levels of supply up here. That's in premium of the current leg that we're building, right? It could even go as far as, uh, well, it could go to the, the level that's uh, marked out here too. So let's see. Okay, we're ranging, we're going to continue to push down, right? See, in this case, prices did not come back to premium. But instead, we are continuing to push lower and we're forming a new sort of structural leg. And again, that's going to float. This is a pretty significant pullback. Again, stealing that concept of how we mark out, you know, um, internal structure on, uh, you know, on the daily or four hour. Essentially, we have this, right? We're continuing to break lower. Again, this is all just internal structure within this larger overall leg, remember. And now we're coming really deep into discount here. So now I'm going to mark out our extreme level. And again, it looks like at this point that, you know, price is going to push to the downside. But let's see if we can kind of catch price as it retraces back into these zones. And again, it may sweep this, right? We can also mark out premium discount like this if we really wanted to. But I'm just sort of marking out swing and internal structure so that we are consistent in the way that we are marking it up, right? Okay, so now we've come into premium of the current internal structure leg that we're within, right? 
So either this is going to hold, the price is going to continue to shoot up, or it's going to hold to the downside, the supply level, and we're going to see this get broken. Okay, so it looks like we've respected this demand level that's in discount of our larger overall swing leg, right? And so now we're creating a new leg like so. Let's see what happens next. I'm going to continue to push up, push up, right? And at some point, if we start to see price uh, break internal structure on the daily time frame within this leg, right? We're starting to make a pullback and we, we can maybe look for shorts, right? So remember within this internal structure leg, what are we in? We're in premium, right? And we're also in premium within the larger swing leg as well. So there's a good chance that price is going to, you know, shoot down from here. Okay, it looks like we're pushing up a little bit higher. We may be sweeping liquidity, tapping into this level, but I would expect that price is going to shoot down now. And there you go. And it looks like it pushed up a little bit higher into premium of the larger overall swing leg, right? These should always take precedent, right? When you're marking out premium and discount, if you're marking it out, pay attention to what the larger overall picture is, right? We don't wanna to get too caught up into, in, into internal structure, you know, the same way that we wouldn't when we're marking out structure itself, right? We don't just use changes of character or internal structure breaks um, to guide us, right? We use the larger overall, like, so in this case, I mean, this is, this is counter trend, right? But you can see that we are well into premium of the larger overall leg. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna delete some of this stuff. We kind of saw how it played out here. Um, and we, we kind of also saw that sometimes price is not gonna retrace um, fully, right? And that can happen both with larger um, structural legs as well as internal structural legs too, where maybe there's just too much momentum behind it and it's not gonna retrace back to you know premium or discount before pushing in the same direction. We may also get a reversal that it happens, right? So uh, let's see, we ended up sweeping this level of supply out and what did we end up respecting in the end? Well, it was this extreme level up here, right? Just barely tapped into it. We can, we can mark it up to the imbalance really, that makes sense. So it looks like we use this as liquidity, price swept into it, and now we're pushing off of it and kind of creating this new leg again, right? So going to happen i'm expecting that price is going to continue to push down and we can just keep sort of adjusting this right now we're tapping into i mean we've tapped now back into around like the 75 percent level of this larger overall range that we're still within remember we're still inside this structural leg and now we've developed the range inside of it so knowing that we are in discount here potentially we can look for a long again and I mean, this long would be pro trend, right? Because we're still expecting this high to go, you know, despite the fact that, yeah, maybe price is a little overextended. That's the only thing that I don't like about it. But we can look for longs here now. And we can expect that price is going to push up, you know, a decent amount. Probably going to get some sort of uh, reaction. I mean, we're starting to get a reaction to this demand level, right? Now, whether or not we are going to come back in the premium of the current internal structure leg that we're in, again, we don't know. But what we can do to sort of hone in and look for, you know, better probability zones of supply and demand. And we can look for supply in premium and demand levels in discount, right? Much like we looked for uh, these levels to hold, right? In discount of the larger overall leg, we can look for these supply levels to hold um, if price retraces back up to here. But we can also mark out within our current internal structure leg levels like this. So price may, you know, be breaking internal structure and it may retest this and we'll see a deeper pullback. Let's see what happens next. Okay, looks like we didn't, we continue to push down, right? And so, I mean, if anything, you could probably take again, this is a whole week of price action, by the way, right? Where you could look to take longs here for the short term, but then obviously now we're coming deeper into this demand level. I'm expecting this is probably gonna fail now, um, but essentially we've created this new structure. Like, And look, with this one, we're actually starting to come back almost to equilibrium, right? Come back all the way to that high. And now we're probably gonna see price hold off of this in internal structure leg. Remember, we're still within the larger overall swing leg. So we've got to keep that in mind as well. But I mean, look, this has been tested quite a few times. It doesn't look like it's gonna hold anymore. And what happens next? Okay, price continues to fall off. So cool little example on the daily there. What I wanna get into now is more recent price action. So I'm gonna pull price pull price forward um, 
to more recent price action where we can look at the daily four hour, 15 minute, and we'll try to even find someone in the entries using this tool. All right, guys, so before we move on to the four hour and 15 minute and even the one minute to look for some entries, what I wanna show you guys here is an example of uh, a market, well, it's EU still, so the same market, but a market that's a little bit more uh, trendy or is trending in one direction versus the rangy market that we were pre previously in, right? So I kind of showed you guys how to play within a larger overall range, um, gave you two examples of that. Let's look at a trending market. So we're obviously very bearish here on Euro dollar. This is back in May of this year, 2022. And we can see that price is shooting down and it's just pulling back the equilibrium and continue, continuing to push down, right? So I've marked out my, my swing structure points here and use that to define my high and low of my uh, premium and discount range. But we can also mark out this level here or this internal structure range that we have, right? Why? Because look, we broke internal structure to the upside, right? So we can use this as well. So knowing that, right? Obviously we could have looked potentially for some sort of short here. Um, I mean, it looks like we tapped into this large overall range, but what I also wanna show you guys is how we can trade you know, counter trend as well. Right, we're expecting that because look, now we are in discount of this leg. We've broken substructure to the upside and we are in, I mean, really in discount of both legs, right? Despite the fact that this low is presumably weak, we're expecting it to go. We can actually look for uh, price to respect or react off of this level, at least in the short term, right? So let's see what happens. Okay, it looks like it tapped into the extreme. We're getting a pullback pretty decent one, right? And now looks like price is starting to turn over and we're potentially gonna get uh, these lows which are gonna get taken out, right? So now we've kind of tapped back into premium of this larger overall leg, right? We almost formed a range here if you wanna consider it that because we kind of went up, down, back up again. And now it looks like price is gonna respect this level and we're gonna continue to push lower. And what happens? We push lower, so look at that. Right? So again, if I drag this out, you can see how price really gravitated toward the premium, right? You could have looked for shorts here. You could have looked for counter trend longs here. I mean, this is what looks like, I don't know, maybe, I don't know, I wanna say like 12 days or so, 16 days, right? So that's half a month, right? Where price is just sort of tracking up. It's not all that volatile, but you can look for longs here in the short term, right? At least from an intraday uh, basis. So you can actually profit off of that. We don't just need to look for shorts all the time just because we're in a bearish market overall, right? So anyways, what happens next? We're starting to develop another uh, leg of price action here on the daily, on Euro dollar, and it's gonna keep on floating down because we're not really getting much of a significant pullback, right? And I'm just gonna keep on adjusting this until we start to pull back and break some sort of internal structure. In this case, I mean, this just barely breaks it, but I would count this as you know, a pullback now. Again, we can steal from the concepts that we use to determine our, our uh, internal structure as well as our swing structure. And we can kind of see that, okay, we're violating these levels, meaning we're violating supply probably on a four hour or 15 minute time frame. And let's see if price now comes and tracks back into premium here, right? Again, it may not come back to this level of supply, but there is a good chance that we are gonna come back into discount and knowing that, right, if we're expecting price is going to be bullish, we can look for longs again, right? So if we see an opportunity to play some sort of demand level here, even though it is super counter trend, right, I, I won't even argue that it's not, right, at least based on the daily, we can look for, you know, longs here, right? I can tell you right now, just by looking at this price action, we've had an, an internal structure shift on the four hour, right? Look, it's right here, right? You can see the supply level got violated. Same with this one. So potentially now we can start looking for longs up until you know either the equilibrium or maybe we expect it to come up into this range, which is this daily supply level, and we can start uh, taking some buys, right? So there you go, see price is continuing to push up. Do we tap into equilibrium? Not quite, uh, we're just about to, let's see. Okay, it looks like it doesn't quite tap into it, which happens sometimes, right? But we've essentially come near equilibrium and it looks like price is starting to fall over to the downside now, right? So again, opportunity here, I'm sure on the 15 minute to look for longs. 
at least in the short term, if you want to take something counter trend. And now that we can see price is starting to turn over and we're starting to see demand fail over here, now we can start looking for shorts again, right? And again, I'm just doing this on the higher time frame so you guys get an idea of how to apply it on the higher time frames, right? It'll give you a better directional bias. And of course, that will give you a better uh, educated guess as to what the 15 minute is going to do. And the 15 minute, of course, is our intraday time frame or is one of our intraday time frames, the one minute as well. But that's where we're looking for our intraday market direction. So we can capitalize on either 15 minute uh, you know, trades where you're leaving a limit order on a 15 minute supply or demand level. Or if you want to use those 15 minute levels as POIs, you can use them and take trades off of the one minute looking for com confirmation on the lower time frame, right? So let's go back. Actually, we'll stay on the four hour for a second. here. Let's see what happens next. Price may still come up into premium here. There's a very, very real possibility. It looks like we're starting to develop a lot of liquidity, right? So again, I'm going to fold all the concepts together. I'm not just relying on premium discount in isolation because it's not reli reliable on its own, right? But either price is going to, you know, respect sort of this chain of supply that we're forming here really roughly. I'm not going to mark out every level, but you can kind of see that it's developing itself here. Um, I mean, I'm sure there are, eh, there looks like an opportunity here from, again, an intraday perspective to look for a short. It doesn't last long, but again, right, if we're on the one minute or even the 15 minute, there is an opportunity to take a short here for sure, right? Um, but let's see, are we going to take out that high? Yeah, we do, right? So again, we built up a lot of liquidity. We kind of expect that if there's a lot of liquidity built up in the form of trend line liquidity or a stack of orders that are kind of sitting here with stop losses above it, that price is going to track higher, right? And then we fold that into the idea of premium discount and the fact that we haven't actually tapped into premium uh, yet, we can expect that price maybe is going to tap in and then it'll push to the downside, right? And what happens? Oh, looks like we range a little bit more, but now I would be expecting because we swept this and now we're starting to take this out, right? That we can start looking for uh, potential shorts here, right? So it looks like price just barely tapped into that. You could maybe even mark out this whole range of supply. And what's another thing that we formed here on the four hour? Surprise, surprise. Look, we have another range, right? Where we can use premium discount again, right? So you could have started using premium discount as early as I would say around this area where price really kind of defined like a high and a low. It would have been something like this, right? Again, we knew that it was high probability that it was going to sweep this high, and that's fine, right? But we could have essentially looked for longs and shorts within this, right? Knowing that longs probably are a little better because then we're in, you know, discount of the larger overall swing structure leg here. But, you know, obviously that would be counter trend as well. Um, but the other thing to consider is that, again, we haven't tapped into premium yet, right? And again, I'm not saying that it's always going to tap into premium. Sometimes there's a lot of volatility in the market and price is just not going to, you know, retrace back into premium in a bear market or into discount in a bullish market. So let's see what happens next. Okay, now we've actually come deeper into it. Again, we got another probably intraday opportunity to look for shorts here and another intraday opportunity to actually look for longs here as well, right? So when you're in a range or a wedge like this, just hedge it, right? You can play the longs and shorts, try to stay out of the middle because you're probably gonna get swept out, but you know, try to play the edges of the range and you're, you're gonna be more likely to uh, actually pull R from an intraday uh, basis off of that range, right? Or out of that range. And look, what do we tap into? We just barely tapped into this range. Now I would expect because we've actually tracked into, you know, true premium of this previous swing structure range on the daily, that price is gonna start to shoot to the downside. So we'll go back on the four hour and let's see what happens next. There you go. And we start to push down quite heavily, right? So that's just another example of, you know, how to use premium discount. I'm now going to show you guys some examples on the 15 minute, as well as, you know, we're going to look for some entries on the one minute as well on EU. Um, but I think that was a really good example. You guys kind of get the idea of how to use it. Again, I like using this more on the higher time frames, And I think, again, I use this personally, um, more on a subconscious level. I don't mark this stuff out, right? I'm more so looking at like, okay, where could price revert to the mean, right? And what do I mean by that? Well, when I'm talking about mean reversion, right? If price is kind of like, you know, moving in one direction, I'm expecting that, you know, sometimes price is going to retrace back to the mean, right? The mean being the equilibrium a lot of the time of a range, right? Either of a range or of a structure's uh, leg, 
right? Um, also, the other thing you can kind of consider, and the other way that I like to use this, is using, you know, premium discount to sort of suss out these uh, capitulation trades where price is getting too extended on one side or the other. Maybe you start seeing price round off, right? This may not be the best example, but you can see it's starting to round off a little bit, right? When price is overextended in one, one way or another, it's just healthy for it to pull back, right? It wants to return back to what is considered you know, a relative fair value uh, for that market, right? And we can see that price did that, right? It came back to premium. Well, first it came back to equilibrium and then eventually premium. And we know that we're in a downtrending market, we're bearish, and that price wants to probably take this load. It's weak, but you know, price is not gonna just continue to fall something like this, right? It's very rare that that happens. Um, typically, you know, the reason that it's not gonna do that is because we have to generate more liquidity, or not us, but the institutions have to generate more liquidity uh, in the form of, uh, you know, rangy price action like this, so they can take that liquidity, build their position, and then, you know, get a better average price so that they can then profit from that move, right? So say they're, you know, stacking up orders, or rather people are stacking up orders here, right? They're taking uh, those people's, people out of their positions, again, building their short position, and now they can profit off of it as price continues to seek out this low, as we kind of expect. All right, guys, let's look at the 15 minute a little bit here um, in relation to the four hour and try to get a sense for that intraday market direction now using premium discount combined with you know structure and liquidity and everything. So what I'm going to do is go back to the daily for a second and let's just take a look at this. So again, what, what happened here? We had a bearish leg of price action on the daily, which I would consider swing structure. Right? We got a significant pullback here. And now we're within this large overall daily leg. Price has pulled back. It swept liquidity from the equilibrium and tapped into a, well, just barely tapped into a supply level or a range in the premium of the leg. And now we're getting a pretty nice reaction off of it, right? So knowing that, I mean, the other thing we kind of want to look at here is kind of whether or not we are tapping into um, a level of demand all the way to the left. That's something that I would look out for. We're going to go in the weekly just because this is so far back. And you can kind of see here our next level of demand that may act as sort of a catalyst for pullback is kind of sitting here. We can see that we've tapped into it, right? So again, I'm not expecting that this is going to hold. To try to call that, I mean, it's pretty difficult. You kind of want to see how price unfolds to see if it is going to respect and hold from that level. But otherwise, you know, it's just a level that's going to be targeted, right? There's a lot of liquidity probably sitting underneath this low. And we expect this low is weak as well, right? From the daily and four hour perspective. So knowing that, right, I'm going to start drawing out my current four hour leg that we're kind of in, right? Because we've broken out of this range now. And let's see what happens. Okay, we're continuing to sort of push down. Now, in this case, it looks like price did not come back into premium. And sometimes, again, that's going to happen. If there's not enough momentum in the market, you can't or sorry, if there's too much momentum in the market, you can't expect that it's always going to retrace back or create a range, right? Um, so again, we're kind of looking at price action that is a lot more trendy, has a lot more momentum behind it, right? And we're just going to kind of follow price down. I'm going to move this like this, right? So obviously, this would be like the daily leg. And then this would be more so our four hour swing structure leg, right? And again, we're just going to keep on floating this low until we get some sort of substructure break to the upside. And it looks like we just got it. So we have this here, right? You can see that price broke to the downside and then to the upside. And if we look at the 15 minute now, we can actually see that these are swing structure breaks on the 15 minute, right? So let's just keep in mind, right? We are in the discount of this larger overall daily leg, right? I'll go on the daily so you can see it. So this leg here, right? From the four hour perspective, right? This would be our range or our, our leg of bearish price action. And again, we're also in discount of it, right? Finally, if we go to the 15 minute, we can also mark out our premium discount like so, right? So same thing as I was talking about before, was there too much momentum in New York session? Is price always going to come and retrace back into, you know, the premium in a bearish market? No, it's not, right? And I mean, do we get a range here? We do. Would I have played this range? Probably not because this was late in New York session into Asia session. I don't trade Asia, though you could have traded it. If you want to scalp Asia, there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. 
there's certain pairs like AU uh, that are a little better for that, right? Any of the yen pairs really, where there is usually more volatility in Asia session. But you know, that's a topic for another uh, video. I think I've actually covered that before in um, the intraday market cycles and stuff. But anyways, from there we can see, I'll, I'll keep this marked out too. We can see that price obviously shot down, right? It kind of traded into uh, deeper, you know, um, discount here, right? As it formed this leg. Now, would I look for longs here? No, I wouldn't, because you're trying to catch a falling knife in this case, right? Trying to call the bottom of the market. Uh, just not really a good idea. On the other hand, once price, you know, starts to break up above these levels and price starts to retest these levels in and around New York session, you have a good opportunity to take a long in discount within the 15 minute, the four hour, and remember the daily too, right? So this is, you know, despite it being extremely counter trend, um, yeah, it's probably a little aggressive. This would be a good opportunity to look for uh, some sort of longs here, right? But even here, right? Even if I were to just throw a, you know, a limit order on this, we can see that this swept liquidity price shot up, right? Violated supply. We violated supply to the left from Asia. We built a lot of liquidity here to target in the form of relative equal highs. And we kind of have a really nice, you know, area that we can take a long off of, right? Maybe because we're counter trend, we only want to target this level of supply up here. But look at that. I mean, that's an 8.86 R trade. That's pretty good if you ask me. Um, so I'll keep that on there over here. And let's mark out this next leg that we sort of form. And I'm going to drag this out of the way so we keep it clean. But this is, again, this is how I kind of approach premium and discount. Again, am I marking this stuff out? No, not really. I'm more so just looking at the legs of price action as well as ranges that form by looking at their highs and lows. And same with the ranges. I'm looking at the highs and lows as well. And I'm trying to get a sense of whether I'm in, you know, premium or discount just by eyeballing it, right? You can be pretty loose about it. And again, it is going to be a little bit subjective. I'm showing you one way of marking it out. You know, some people may mark it out like this, right? And it's not necessarily, you know, wrong or anything. Um, but I think there is a certain way to approach it. I like using structure to sort of define my highs and lows, whether it's swing structure or internal structure. And to me, that just, you know, makes it a lot easier, right? So overall, we can see that we are, you know, now in premium of this leg. Now, would I, again, would I look for shorts here? Not necessarily. I mean, you can see that we're tapping into a supply level here, right? But without price shifting uh, internal structure on the 50 minute, you, know, you can't really call that, right? We kind of push down, we retest it. I'm sure there's some sort of one minute uh, break of structure here. So maybe you could play the chain if you really wanted to. But, um, and, and you know what, to be fair, if you were in this long on the 50 minute, it's not the worst area to hedge from. Just we're getting a little bit late in the day with the New York session as well. So let's see what happens in Asia or in spread hours and then Asia session here. Looks like we're kind of ranging, right? Now we're trading back into discount of this larger overall leg. So I'd probably mark out this level of demand knowing that, you know, we traded off of it previously. We have to be a little bit careful here because obviously price, um, I mean, to, to try and take a long here now, it, it was better to take it early on, but because price is kind of pushed up and now it's retracing back down, these lows are really weak. Right, so we want to be aware of that. And on top of that, we have like a nice stack of liquidity that's kind of built up here that we're going to expect is probably going to get taken um, in order to fuel the move. So I wouldn't give, you know, this level, uh, I wouldn't have like too much hope in that level holding. I mean, it may sweep it and maybe we'll see price, you know, pull back again. It's a very real possibility. And you can also see that we're starting to essentially form this larger overall range, right? We've essentially defined a, a high here this low is, you know, pretty clearly a weak low, but again, it doesn't mean that we can't play longs when we're in discount here, right? So keep playing it forward. And let's see. So Asia session kind of doesn't do much. And now we're tracking deeper into discount within the uh, larger overall 15 minute range that we have here, right? So I'm just going to draw this to the right, right? We can see that it kind of lines up with this high and this low. Right. It also actually lines up with, uh, well, I mean, this is the low of, of the larger overall four hour and daily leg. So it would make sense that it lines up with that. Um, but remember, we're also de like tapping into this demand level, which again, I expect is not really going to hold. I would expect it's going to hold if we start seeing the four hour order flow shift. 
right? So this is a weekly zone, remember, right? There's probably a daily zone or range that we're probably looking at uh, if you were to really look at it, but it's super far away, right? Um, anyways, let's see what happens next. Okay, London, we don't do much. And then now we're coming into New York session and what's happening? Price is really starting to shoot down, right? So again, would I look for shorts here? Like probably not. I mean, you could knowing that, you know, price started to push down, uh, but you know, it's not the highest probability thing. Um, you know, that being said, it is pro trend. So you have that on your side, but you, know, you really want to try to avoid playing the middle of like a range like this, right? Cause who's to say that price is not going to retrace back up to here and then shoot down, right? Sweeping you out of this position. So just something to keep in mind. Let's see if this demand level holds. I'm expecting it's probably going to sweep it. Oh, we're holding, holding. Okay. See, there you go. Swept it. And now we're seeing price start to shoot up. So now I'm going to pay attention to is because we are in a discount here, even though, you know, we've I mean, essentially we've established this range, right, that I've marked out. And even though we've we've pulled back and now we're expecting this low is going to go, we can still potentially look for a long here, right? This was an intraday bear trap. Let's see if we can break substructure to the upside here, right? And I'm thinking we probably are going to. It looks like price is starting to uh, show, show some strength on that end right again we can see we swept liquidity here of these lows as well as these lows here and look at that that looks like it's probably news if i'm being honest uh, this is like 10 30. it's very possible this was news or just like pure volatility in the market right so potentially you know i mean it looks like we tapped into the leftover pieces of this level of demand here right just looking at it in hindsight and potentially you could have maybe looked for a a long on the one minute. I, I'm not really sure there would have been one though, because we didn't quite break this level. If anything, we broke like this internal level of uh, supply based on this inside bar, right? So, you know, either way, we can see that we've now shot up into premium here again within this range. And so we just, we just want to keep on playing, uh, you know, our supply levels in premium and our demand levels on uh, uh, within the discount. Right. So let's actually pull price back a bit here and see if we can catch anything on the one minute. I'm going to guess there's some sort of continuation here, um, but let's play through it and see what happens. So I mean, you can see that we tapped into this supply level, which is a 15 minute uh, level of supply. Right. We ended up taking this liquidity as we kind of predicted uh, previously. Right. It didn't happen right away. Right. But after price built enough liquidity, right, you can see it on the 15 minute ended up taking out taking it out as uh, inducement, tricking people into, you know, holding their positions here potentially in anticipation of this low going, right? And again, the problem with taking trades from here, I mean, it's fine from an intraday perspective, but to try and hold it, I mean, you end up being a weak handed seller in this case, because you're trading in the middle of the range, literally at equilibrium, right? So it's anybody's guess whether we are going to push lower, it's really a toss up between whether it's going to push lower or if we're going to, you know, get swept out. But I would say there's probably a higher probability it's going to get swept out when you have liquidity built up in a supply chain as clean as this, right? So again, it's just trend line liquidity. You would expect a retail trader to try and short off of this stuff, right? And, you know, I'm not denying that us SMC traders are retail traders either because, you know, we are. And by the same accord, you know, remember institutional traders trade quote unquote retail strategies too. So just something to keep in mind. So we'll pull back to the one minute here and let's see, we're in this nice zone here. We can see that we've kind of swept this out. And remember, we're pro trend. We're, we are also in premium, right, of this larger overall range, right? Yeah, we're in discount of, you know, the four hour, but we're expecting the low is weak. And if we start to see price shift in a nice way, right, we swept this, um, then we can kind of look for um, shorts here. So let's see what happens. Um, like we even kind of sweep this it's it's pretty subtle here what i'm seeing but i think we have this demand level that kind of held we flipped into this wick price is now respecting that i would not trade directly off of this necessarily i'd be more interested in the extreme um but remember we're pro trend right if anything i'm gonna look for uh some sort of continuation here so let's see if we can take out these lows then i will throw a short on okay there we go we've done it and did we build some liquidity here before our entry level? We did. So I'm going to throw a limit order on that and we'll see if we get tapped in or not. It's actually funny because this is 
I mean, I'm marking out the range, right? 8.8 .8 pips on EU. It's very similar to the... Oh, it looks like we're not going to get tapped in. It's very similar to the stop loss that we had on our 15 minute long, right? So, let's see if we can catch a continuation here. Let's see, price taps into this and taps into this. Again, I'm not going to go too deep into the theory of why I'm marking this stuff out. If you guys want to learn how to enter the way that we do, join Phantom. It's pretty simple. We go really in depth uh, into, you know, why we take stuff. Um, it's not just a guessing game, right? We have actual rules behind, you know, why we're taking particular trades. In this case, I saw a really nice long continue, or sorry, a short continuation here, right? We'd be break even at this point. And again, this is all predicated off of, you know, the premium discount analysis that we kind of did together just now, as well as, um, you know, the fact that we're tapping into supply, we swept liquidity, we're bearish, we're expecting the lowest week on the 50 minute and four hour. You know, there's a lot of confluence is stacking up, right? So we'd be break even at this point. We got a pretty nice stop loss. Um, again, you know, one thing I'm going to quickly say here, it's a mini rant. I, I think it's funny that, you know, some people will um, say, okay, you know, I only want a two pip stop loss. But the honest truth is, if you understand anything about how a market works, especially, you know, the, the currency market or any market for that matter, it could be cryptocurrencies, um, you know that volatility varies right volatility is not a static thing right so there are going to be some instances where price is so volatile that you know we need say an eight pip stop loss like this right I mean, look price was pretty volatile uh, previously and sometimes price is going to be relatively non-volatile where, where we can get away with using two pip stop losses right but to say that you're always going to use a two pip stop loss i think is a little bit silly it shows you don't really understand the market all that well right it's all relative right if price is volatile it's gonna move in a volatile manner. If it's not volatile, you can have a smaller stop loss and you know still bank a healthy amount of R based on the movement in the market, despite the fact that it's not moving with a lot of momentum, right? So in terms of targets for this continuation, let's look for, well, really we can look to target like this low, right? And that's 13 R right there. I would feel comfortable holding the full position uh, at that level. If you wanted to take, um, Sorry, I mean, I would I'd feel comfortable holding it until this level, maybe just even taking partials here, right? But if you're a little bit more conservative and you want to take partials earlier on, you could probably do it here at around 7R. I think there's nothing wrong with that. Let's see what happens. I'm going to play price forward on the one minute and we'll just kind of, you know, analyze it. You can see that we're coming now back into discount, right? And we're kind of ranging here. We're getting later into the day, right? Let's see, are we gonna get taken uh, break even on this? Potentially, right? Our stop loss would be here, but let's see. Okay, I'm kind of trading into spread hours. So I would say that we're probably gonna get taken out break even. Okay, it makes sense, but that's fine. I, I think that's a pretty cool continuation that we caught anyways. Sometimes you're gonna get break even on them, right? But, you know, I was kind of anticipating that low is gonna go. It looks like price wants to continue to range though. So let's see if we can attack it again and continue looking for shorts in supply, or sorry, shorts in premium and longs in discount. Again, I'm gonna avoid trying to take longs from here because I don't wanna play in the middle of the range, right? We've established a very clear range here. We have a nice supply chain. Let's see what happens next. So I'm gonna keep playing it through and we can potentially even look to trade, you know, London session. We're back in the supply level. Let's see if price starts to shift again on the one minute. Now, this is Asia session again, so I don't really trade this, but let's see. You may even sweep the high of this potentially in London, right? Yeah, there you go. Why? Because there's liquidity sitting above it. Does that mean that we can't play this uh, for short still? I mean, look, we're still in premium, right, overall. And we can see that, you know, we really just swept the 50-minute um, supply level here. Looks like we're kind of closing above it, but who's to say that we're not just, again, tapping into this sort of leftover uh, level of supply up here, right? So I'll drag that over. Again, is this in premium of our range? Yeah, it is, right? So again, we can look for shorts here. Obviously order flow is you know, bullish here because uh, we're disrespecting supply. Demand is very clearly holding, right? But, you know, maybe we might even sweep this high too. I mean, we have like equal, relative equal highs here. Let's see, let's go in the one minute and let's see if we can get price to sort of shift uh, on the one minute within London session here. So there's Frankfurt open. 
There we go. Okay, we swept the high. Can kind of had a feeling that was gonna happen, right? You have to think, right? There's a huge pool of liquidity and stop losses sitting up here. It just makes sense it's gonna get taken out, right? Again, if an institution is trying to build their short orders up, then you know they're gonna sweep people out and then probably take price to the downside. And again, this is a form of a bull trap here, right? As I've explained to you guys in the past in uh, in previous videos, right? Um, if you watch, I think the liquidity video, I go into that a little bit, I'm pretty sure, um, as well as the intraday market cycle video. So be sure you guys watch that. You know, if you're not in Phantom uh, yet, those are a couple really good resources that we put out for free that I think, uh, you know, should be able to help you if you like trading this style of trading, right? Trading supply and demand. But let's see. Now I would be interested potentially in taking shorts here if we can shift to the downside. Um, but obviously, if we continue to push up higher, right? I'm going to expect that, um, you know, demand really is still in control here, right? Um, knowing that, right, I don't necessarily want to take longs here because, again, look, we're in premium, right? I'm not trying to call the breakout and I'm not going to try to call a continuation uh, just based off of the 15 minute. Now, that being said, right, the other thing we have to kind of keep in mind here, right, is the four hour and the daily within those legs, we are actually in discount still, right? And we're approaching equilibrium of the four hour leg. But also remember, we're tapping into this like daily range or weekly zone too. So let's go back on the one minute and let's take a look to see if it looks like we're starting to slowly break or violate uh, demand here. Let's see if we can start to uh, look for shorts again. So I'm going to mark this as a 50 minute substructure break through so these dotted lines. And what I'll do is I'll just mark out this supply zone as well, right? What we can also do is adjust our supply or sorry, our premium discount range here. He's obviously broken out of it a little bit. Um, not a big deal, but you know, we can kind of mark it out like this and we can see we're still in premium uh, of this range that we've kind of defined, right? You could even go as far as like marking it here. So let's quickly see and, you know, just investigate. Did we tap into something here? looks like we kind of tapped into this range. Okay, great. Maybe we're starting to form a supply chain. Okay. So now I can go on the one minute and we're going to look for um, longs again, or not long, sorry, shorts. So I'll just mark with the liquidity here. We swept that. And let me just see. Got this level here. Got some liquidity here. And again, can't go too in depth here because otherwise I'd be giving away everything. If you guys want to learn how to you know, catch one minute trades like this, even the 15 minute, right? If you want to trade the 15 minute and, and, you know, trade intraday or even swing it, this is kind of your opportunity to uh, learn how to do that as well by joining the Phantom community, where again, we cover basically how we do all of it, right? Everything from the higher time frame concepts down to the lower time frame stuff that I'm kind of showing you guys here uh, without explaining it. So looks like we're continuing to push down. Again, could we use premium discount on the one minute? Sure, why not, right? We, we also don't wanna like try to chase shorts uh, and continuations, you know, too far down a leg once we start getting, you know, back into discount in a bearish market. But, you know, if we're still in premium overall, then I would say it's fine. We can look for continuations, but I don't necessarily want to, you know, throw a limit on some of these levels that I'm kind of marking out uh, just cause they're in premium. Because if price has tracked or printed too far away from it, there's a very good chance that if it is going to come back, it's probably going to take it out as liquidity. So usually what I'll do is I'll just wait for a price to set up again. But let's see, I'm kind of tapping into this as well, right? Okay, we're starting to retrace. This is still London session. Uh, this is starting to actually look pretty good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to throw a, an order on this. Let's just say we entered market execution. I'm going to give it some room to breathe a little bit, right? So we'll do 5.4 pip stop loss there. Ooh, we just barely, barely stayed in that. So let's see here. I'd say we probably would have got taken out by spreads on that one, unless, you know, there was no spreads. So we were close on it. Let's see if there was another way that we could potentially enter it, though. Looks like price did come to retest this, right? And we kind of violated this level of demand down here. So if anything, we could have re-entered here. There you go, you have a much smaller stop loss. Though the way, again, I would probably approach this is because we have such a small zone, I'd probably mark it out something like this. 
Let's be realistic about it. And there you go. There's your two pip stop loss. But again, I'm going to give it some room because of scenarios like this that happen sometimes. So let's see, we're in that and price is starting to shoot down quite aggressively, right? Were we able to catch a short continuation in premium? Yeah, I would say so. So in terms of our break even level here, again, I'm not going to explain why, um, you know, you would take a break even here, but, or at least trail your stop break even. But for our original order, it would have been, you know, this low, which obviously we would have, you know, got taken out of that potentially because of spreads. It looks like it just took us out by a tick, but with the re-entry that we've kind of defined here, we're, you know, price kind of set up again, we can, you know, take our break even at this level. Right. So we'd be in this. This is already running 10R if we just target this low. But I would look to hold this now because price has effectively created a bull trap. Right. We kind of set up in premium of the range. Even though the range expanded a bit, we were really nice in this premium zone. Um, supply kind of held for a bit. And look, we have all of this liquidity to target. Right. So let's hold it and see what happens. But really, if you wanted to, you could just TP at this low. Let's see what happens next. Okay, price starts running, right? And again, start taking out some of these levels. We can expect that price is just going to fall off. We could even go as far as targeting this, right? Um, now, if I'm being honest, I didn't see any real entries early on here. And that's going to happen sometimes, right? So really, I was just looking for a continuation trade on this. Price set up in a nice way, but we didn't really get a setup in here, right? Price never retested the zone that I was kind of looking at. I uh, wasn't really interested in this, though you could have you know, played this as well. Just by, by the time price had you know, pushed down, you know, I wouldn't have wanted to play that. So um, this zone looked good, though. And you can, if you want, I'll zoom in here. You guys can analyze this price action to try to figure out why I would have been interested in it. It's not the greatest level, if I'm being honest, but it does do one thing that I really like. And then the level that I was kind of looking at here, I mean, this is way better. You can probably figure out why. Again, I won't explain it. I'm, I'm kind of kind of setting up a little bit of a treasure hunt for you guys in this case. Um, same with the uh, the re-entry here. So let's go back to the 15 minute here for a second. I actually see another potential place that we could have maybe looked for a, uh, a scale in. So I'm going to mark out the supply level. Again, are we in premium within the range? Yeah, we are, right? So maybe there was something here. Let's quickly look. That's probably as far as I was I would go in terms of you know chasing a trade but okay we can see that we kind of formed a chain here and we have a couple of levels of demand sort of failing as well so again not the greatest setup because it's lacking you know one thing that i, I look for in particular um but you know i wouldn't be opposed to uh throwing a short on something like this right again again i'm gonna give this um you know room to breathe right we don't want to get swept out of our positions it's not worth it Think about the opportunity cost, right? You're really gonna like sacrifice um, a winning trade because you're, you know, so greedy that you need a two pip stop loss. I would hope not, right? And of course, we beat break even on this pretty quick. It'd be in and around this level. You can go ahead and try to figure out why. I'm, I'm looking at that, right? All right, guys. To conclude the video, I wanted to show you guys a uh, quick example here, just using a made up line chart that I kind of drew here to illustrate the different places that we can use our uh, premium discount tool. Again, I don't use the tool. There's nothing wrong with using it when you're learning. Um, I just find it crowds my charts up. So that's the reason I don't do it. But of course I look for premium discount uh, when I'm just looking at the market naturally, right? So first place we can look at here is just a simple range leg of uh, bearish price action here. We can see price shoots down. We mark out the high and low. We could potentially look for, you know, counter trend longs. Pretend we're coming from a bearish market, by the way. We can look for potential counter trend longs that are a little more aggressive in discount. We see that price trades into premium. We can look for shorts here, right? In anticipation that this low is weak. Okay, price then shoots down and we create a new leg of structure, right? I would say swing structure in this case, right? Uh, what happens, again, maybe if you wanna take counter trend longs here. Again, I wouldn't do it unless price uh, shifts our internal structure, right? Then I would you know, try to take a long maybe. But then we see price comes and trades back into premium and potentially we can look for shorts in and around this area again, right? Okay, what happens next? Price then really shoots down with a lot of aggression, right? 
and now we form this larger overall you know leg that we eventually start to uh, trade within as a range right and of course in between that what do we have we have these internal sort of levels of um, structure that are forming within our larger overall leg as well right now again why did i draw this out the way i did well it's to show you that again this price always going to come and retrace back into premium in a bearish market or into discount in a bullish market no i think i've repeated this like three or four times in this video now but i really want to drill it into your head that you have to kind of combine all the other concepts together right momentum is going to pick up if structure tells us that we're really bearish maybe we've tapped into a major level level of supply and we have a bunch of liquidity to target you know sometimes it doesn't make sense to you know take counter trend longs here this is where you would get absolutely clapped trying to do that and sometimes price won't trade back into you know this level here and there's also going to be scenarios like this where again i mean we're marking out internal structure here right we want to be more aware of this larger uh, overall leg of swing structure that we're in and we want to pay attention to premium discount within that but we can see that look in this case price does come back into premium but ends up taking it out right this is a very realistic scenario of what you're going to encounter in pretty much any market right so what happens next okay price then starts to push up right we'll just mark this as one leg do we come back into to discount in this bullish internal structure leg no we don't how about this one this one we just barely tap into equilibrium and then we continue to push up right with this one again do we come into uh discount again yeah we do but it doesn't really like hold or sustain itself right so kind of something to to keep in mind then what happens well remember now price has traded into what i would consider you know the 25 percent right of this uh the 24 sorry the 25 percent of this larger overall premium discount leg right so we've come pretty deep into um premium here and we can expect that price you know may fall off from here at least in the short term right and then we start to sort of range around for a bit so we get another range that we can kind of mark out here and when i say range i mean in this case it's not a range leg it's more of a range in the sense that we have supply and demand holding or you know support and resistance uh holding at the top and bottom and this is where again you want to try to avoid playing in the middle of the range right why because you're probably going to get swept out of liquidity you know if this is a four hour chart there's nothing wrong with taking those intraday positions to uh, capitalize on you know small moves in the market almost like you're scalping it i mean it essentially is scalping it but you want to try to focus on playing the edges of that range because that's going to you know maximize your profit potential as well as improve your strike rate right because we're not going to be getting into trades that are going to sweep us out as liquidity right so you can kind of mark it out like that right that's kind of just my thought process uh behind it right and obviously we break out of that range right like so and then remember we're trading even deeper into premium now look what happens we're tapping into a level of supply over here that just happens to line up i didn't even do that intentionally it's kind of funny um but that level of supply is within premium of the larger overall leg right so all of this is really is just internal structure or a complex pullback within our larger leg here right we come we trade into premium here potentially you look for shorts here right price then pushes down right we kind of define this leg we start to get a pretty clear pullback right um and again what happens well it looks like we tap into a demand level that is within discount of our larger overall leg right this is actually within the 25 percent or sorry the 75 percent of this right so i mean it's kind of uh i know i'm saying like 25 and 75 percent right what i mean by that obviously is that you could mark it out like this it's kind of interchangeable i'm talking about the uh external quadrants here right out of these four lines so um anyways again not really intentional it's funny that these are kind of lining up it's really good for the example but we can see that price is now tapped into a demand level in discount and again we can look for longs here right um what happens next price then obviously shoots up right and we end up blowing through this previous structure leg switching now to bullish price action right so this is just again a few scenarios in which you can use premium discount in order to get a better sense of where you are in the market and it's kind of how you can apply uh, the idea of mean reversion in the market to um to take advantage of price trying to uh, trade at a more fair value.
if that makes sense. So anyways, I want to thank you guys again for watching this video. I hope it was helpful. We went through quite a few examples ranging from the daily four hour, 15 minute, even down to the one minute. And obviously I hope this example that I've just shown you guys as well uh, helps. But, uh, but yeah, if you guys are looking to learn how we trade in phantom trading, we don't use premium discount all that much. We really rely more so on things like structure and liquidity. Um, but if you want to learn how to trade the way that we trade and learn how you know we enter on the one minute and define high probability POIs to trade off of, you know, on the 15 minute and four hour, I would urge you to uh, to join and join the community where you can actually you know pick up the skills that you need in order to find consistency in your trading. Anyways, thanks again, guys. I will catch you all on the next video. Take it easy. Bye.